So in 2012, we, we were seeing the same thing that everyone sees on the internet and in the news about how this class of chemistry, the neonicotinoids, were impacting honeybees. And we became concerned because that particular class of insecticides is extremely important to us. The first thing that we decided to do was to see actually what happened with that neonicotinoid seed treatment when you put it on that seed. What, what is the fate of it? How does it end up in the plant? Okay, so we got started on this project when, when we realized the, how big a, uh, a situation it was and, and what impact those neonicotinoids uh, had for our growers. They're very vital for us, not only in soybeans, but in cotton and rice and, and grain sorghum and corn. They're used uh, just about in every major row crop. So, and our concern was they're, they're saying some pretty bad things about what these, this class of chemistry can do to pollinators. So we decided we needed to evaluate the impact of those uh, insecticides in our area rather than taking somebody else's word for it. And so we started a series of studies where we looked at the residue fate of those seed treatments and, and how they played out in the plant as the plant developed because what we were told uh, was that you treat a seed with, a, with one of these products and it grows up, it, it starts to bloom and then the bee comes to visit and it gets a dose and, and it and it uh, has problems with that insecticide. So we started looking at it from that perspective first. And what we found was no detection of the, of the product in the, in the flowers of cotton or in the uh, flowers of soybeans or the nectar of cotton and that kind of thing. And, and quickly found out that it's really not, by the time the plant begins to bloom, the, the, the neonicotinoid seed treatment has played out. And it's really not, the, the bees aren't getting a dose. And, and that, but that wasn't enough. We had to, had to go on and, and, and look at it on a holistic level. And that meant we had to grow our own bees. We started raising our own hives. And we had two locations in a high ag area and a low ag area where we actually figured out uh, a good place with a, a mix of, of crops around it in a two and a half mile radius. And we documented in that two and a half mile radius around the beehives, we mapped that location and all the crops that were out there and all the seed treatments that were going out on a majority of the fields in that two and a half mile radius. And we started uh, looking at the bees themselves and seeing what we could find in the hive. So we collected bees that were coming back from foraging. And we also looked at the at the eggs and the larva and the pupa and in the nectar itself and the pollen that they were collecting and that kind of thing. And, and, and for two years, we did this study where we mapped all these fields and, and, and uh, in two years, we never found one neonicotinoid in those hives from those fields that were being treated with, with that seed treat, those seed treatments. So we felt really comfortable saying that they're, they're really not, you know, and what we had seen with the fate, the residue fate was, was very complimentary of what we were actually seeing on a, on a field level. We took it a step further. We wanted to see if we did get one of those neonicotinoids in the hive, what, what impact it really would make. And so we started feeding the bees. Uh, we fed them uh, sugar water in the hive at various levels of, of uh, imidacloprid. And we had a five parts per billion, 20 parts per billion, and 100 parts per billion in an untreated check that had zero. And just to see what impact that would have on the bees. And, and basically for two years, uh, and we measured all those same things that we had measured before, the, the bees themselves, the cat brood, the, the open brood, the eggs and all that kind of stuff, the beeswax itself. And, 
and the nectar in the hive and all those things, what we saw was that even at 100 parts per billion, which was 20 times the level of, constant, of concern, uh, it was having virtually no impact on, on bees. And so after six years of hard work and dedication to determining the impact of, of these products on, on, our, uh, on our pollinators, we, we came to the conclusion that they're really not a, a threat to particularly the honeybees. That's what our study was on. And, and we feel very comfortable telling growers that, that they're not having any adverse impact on those honeybees. And, and the beekeepers out here that are trying to make a living too. So we feel very comfortable with, with our data set and feel like it's, and we've had it published in various journals and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we feel very comfortable saying that, that there's virtually no impact with seed treatments, the, the neonic seed treatments uh, on, on honeybees at all.